Hello, everybody. MTP 203, Unit 1. Sewing techniques or treatic. In tie and dye, the sewing method is entirely dependent on the ability to draw up the material into gathers so closely on sewing thread that the dye cannot penetrate into the folds. It is essential, therefore, to have very strong thread that does not break halfway through the operation and that will remain taut while supporting the weight of the closely gathered cloth during the process of dyeing. Linen carpet thread is very suitable for this purpose. Used single or double where extra strength is needed. Creole needles are better than ordinary sewing needles as they accommodate the thick thread without undue bulk and thus avoid making permanent holes in the fabric. Medium to fine weave fabrics are best. There is one rule that applies to all sewing methods. Always make a large knot in the thread before beginning to sew and a large knot in the thread as soon as it is taken out of the needle of cut. This means there is a large knot at either end of the line of sewing. Never leave a loose end of thread anywhere without a knot. Where the pattern is small, single thread is sufficient, but double thread is essential where there is a large area to be sewn. For instance, where a line of sewing extends right across the cloth, if a thread is not strong enough, it will snap during the pulling up and the pattern will be spoiled or lost completely. For the pulling up process, gradually slide the cloth along each sewing thread until it is bunched into a solid mass of gathers at one end. Make sure that the knot at the end of the thread is bulky enough to hold the cloth in position. The gathered cloth will slip off the thread if the knot does not form an adequate barrier. After pulling up the thread tightly, the ultimate success of the pattern depends on a firm secure fastening off. That will not slacken in the slightest while the sample is dyed. It must be able to keep the loosely packed folds of cloth from bursting away from the thread. Fastening of method. The following suggestion should cover any eventuality. There is no one way of fastening off after sewing. Different problems require different solutions. Time. As in binding where there are two ends joining, one of the best way of fastening off after pulling up the thread is to tie those ends together. Backstitch. After all the sewing has been completed and the double or single thread has been tightened up to its limit, several backstitches can be used for fastening off. The difficulty with this method is to prevent the thread from slipping while the back stitches are being sewn. To mitigate this danger, grip the bunched up cloth at the same time pressing the left thumb securely on the spot where the thread emerges from the last fold of cloth. Sew the back stitches firmly so that no further loosening of the thread is possible. Making a false end for tying. If after sewing a solitary end of the thread needs fastening off and back stitching is impracticable, it is quite easy to create a false end for tying to it. Method 
thread of needle with a small fresh length of thread and make a substantial knot at one end with one or more slip stitches attach the new thread to the cloth adjacent to the existing end the odd end can now be tied up with the new end a join this method is also used for attaching an additional sewing thread if the first one is not quite long enough to finish a line of sewing not the end of the first thread x overlap the new thread for one or two stitches then continue the line of sewing cutting the sewing thread to fasten off in some instances more specially with over sewing where a long line of sewing is involved it is better to make the fastening off in the middle of the row or even to make several breaks where there is an exceptionally lengthy line of sewing method check up to see that the line of sewing has a solid knot at each end ease the sewing thread into a loop in the center of the row or at any other spot chosen to make a break of fastening off cut the thread and knot the ends thus formed pull up both pieces of thread bunching the cloth as tightly as possible tie the two ends into a single knot then pull the two threads away from each other until the gap in the line of sewing closes right up tie the ends together again until it is impossible for the threads to slacken separating a double thread when a double thread is used for sewing and there is no other means of fastening off it is possible to tie the two strands into a knot method complete the row of sewing and pull up the thread until the cloth is bunched into a compact mass cut the thread 3 or 4 inches beyond the cloth separate the two strands and tie them into a single knot pull the two strands in opposite directions and give a final tug to tighten the row of sewing before completing the knot if this stage can be maneuvered while the left thumb is pressed on the first half of the knot to prevent it from slipping a very much more effective fastening off will be achieved after the knot has been tied twice it is advisable to tie it again several times to build up a knot big enough to keep the cloth from slipping off the thread tying both ends of a line of sewing together after completing a row of running or over sewing stitches right across a sample it is often more advantageous to tie both ends of the one row together for a satisfactory fastening off this prevents the edges of the sample from curling inwards and thus missing the dye it makes a neat convenient roll for dyeing and quite often produces more clearly defined resist areas this method of fastening off can only be used on samples where lines or bands of sewing stretches across from one side of the cloth to the other method check up that both ends of all the sewing threads are knotted pull up these threads so that the cloth is bunched up closely to the center with the right side of the sample outside turn back the left edge to meet the right edge of the cloth as if making a roll or tube 
Tie both ends of each line of sewing together, pulling up the threads as possible while making the nut. Fastening off a continuous sewing thread. When several lines of sewing have been made on one continuous thread, this can be tightened and fastened off by any of the methods described earlier. If it is necessary to fasten off each row separately, processed as follows, pull out the loops at both sides of the sample where the thread is carried from one row to the next. Cut each loop and knot the ends. Then tie both ends of each row of sewing together to form a tube. The loops can be pulled out on one side only, cut the ends knotted, then tie together in pairs. In both cases, the cloth must be bunched up tightly as possible before the thread is tied finally. General hints on sewing methods. The following points apply to all sewing methods. Sewing. The texture or treatment of the design may be varied by using small or large stitches as well as coarser and finer thread. Finish all the sewing on a small sample before beginning to pull up the threads. It is much more difficult to work on a partially gathered piece of cloth than one that is flat. With a large sample, the thread can be tightened a little at one end if economy in the use of thread is being considered. Allow a generous gap between the areas that is being sewn and that which is bunched up. There should be enough ungathered cloth left to enable the rest of the sewing to be carried out comfortably. Dyeing. The sewing technique is usually classed as shallow or thin tying and therefore requires a shorter time in the dye bath. Otherwise, the resist areas are lost. Rinse very thoroughly and leave until absolutely dry before untying. Untying. The most obvious place to cut a sewing thread are first at every knot. Give the knot a slight pull so that the edges of the scissors can slide underneath to snip it off, making sure there is no fabric being snipped at the same time. Second, at any point where two threads are tied together, insert the blade of the scissors into the small triangle that is formed after pulling the knotted thread away from the cloth and cut both sides of the knot. Sometimes it is necessary to cut the thread in the center of a row of sewing. This requires greater care and precision. Part of the fold of cloth until the thread is visible. Either insert the tip of a pair of scissors and snip the thread or better still Lever the blunt end of the needle under the small piece of taut thread until there is enough room to insert the blade of the scissors to cut it. 
The thread used in over sewing can be cut in several places at each nut and along the center of the row. There are three distinct classes in the sewing technique. Running or tacking stitches on single cloth. Second, running or tacking stitches on double cloth or folded cloth. Third, over sewing or whipping stitch. Running or tacking stitches on single cloth. First, A. Lines and bands. Method. Mark the cloth with the crease or a pencil line in the direction of a row of sewing. Make a large knot in the thread. Sew along the line. Cut off the thread and make a knot at the end. Long and shorter stitches may be combined to vary the texture. Long stitches create a better resist. Pull up the thread so that the cloth is collected into a tight mass of gathers and fasten off by tying two ends together where possible. This must be done really effectively or there will be no resist produced. Sewing on single cloth is the shallowest tying method and should be given a very short dip in the dye bath. Wet out sample before dyeing. Rinse thoroughly, dry and untie. Several Parallel lines of sewing placed approximately one-fourth to half-inch apart make a pleasing band of texture. The thread can be tied on from one line to the next and the band drawn up as one line of sewing. Dye as above. These lines and bands can be repeated on a sample to form an all-over design where two or more colors are being dyed some of the sewing can be left slack until after the first dyeing they can then be tightened and fastened off before dyeing the next color Wavy, curved or zigzag bands. These bands of running stitches needs not necessarily straighten but can change direction forming curves or zigzag etc. Method. Mark out the design on the cloth indicating where each line of stitches is to be placed. To make the outline of the band more definite, use small to medium stitches for the outside. But to save time, larger stitches are permissible for the filling in rows. Use double thread when there is likely to be any strain. The whole block can be sewn on the one piece of thread drawn up and secured with one fastening off. Dye in one or more colors. Mm -hmm. 
and all over sewing texture lines of running stitches repeated over an area of cloth will give a texture that resembles smocking if a large area of this texture is planned the sewing up stage can become very tedious larger stitches will save time or rather a mixture of large and small stitches along each row keep all the knots at the side or use a very long length of double thread which will extend over a considerable area this can be drawn up so that one fastening off is made or the cloth may be formed into a tube for the fastening off leave some of the rows slack until after the first or second color has been dyed binding can also be added to the tube of gathered cloth after the first dyeing to give stripes a darker dye can be brushed on the tightly packed folds after the first or second dyeing to speed up the sewing process on a long length of cloth fold the entire sample in half across or lengthways and sew on the double cloth keep the sample flat for dyeing resist line a narrow resist line between two given points either straight or curved can be formed on the cloth by the running stitch technique method draw the required line ab take a needle with strong thread knot it at one end and sew from b to a using medium stitches take the needle back and insert it in the cloth just beyond b pass the needle underneath the line bringing it to the surface again just beyond a a loop of thread now encircles the sewing line pull out the knotted end at b for about 2 inches tighten the sewing thread at a so that the line of sewing is gathered up into a compact bunch with a loop covering any of the original pencil line that happens to be showing this is very important especially with curves as it ensures that the correct direction of the line is maintained tie both ends of the thread together so that the loop grips the line of sewing absolutely firm and taut if a more pronounced resist is aimed at take one or two over sewing stitches over the first loop pulling up each one firmly on the line of sewing before finally fastening off a1 and ab are carried out in the same way as ab several of these lines can be grouped together to form interesting motifs and patterns After completing the resist line it is possible to make a block of texture by adding a double layer of over sewing stitches down the cloth beyond and in line with AB this can be done before or after the first dyeing
ensuing shapes. Almost any shape can be produced in tie and dye with this sewing method. The principle of using a running stitch outline filled in with rows of stitching can be applied to a very simple or quite complicated shapes. Draw the required design on the cloth in pencil. Use single or double, thick or fine thread according to the amount of strain involved. Knot the thread and suit round the outlines using stitches 1 8 to half inch long. The filling and stitching should be designed in such a way that the rows are parallel to each other. The rows are parallel to the outline as far as possible and the rows help to express the form of the object being depicted. For instance, a leaf shape can have the filling in lines in sewing places to represent veins. Complete all sewing on the design before pulling up the thread and fastening off. Some of the threads may be left slack until after the first or second dyeing. If a definite sequence of pulling up has been planned beforehand, it is helpful if the sewing is carried out in different colored threads. For example, white threads for the area to be drawn up before the first dyeing. Fawn thread for the part to be drawn up before the second dyeing. Brown or black thread for those rows to be left for the last dyeing. It is possible to use previously dyed threads for the sewing technique. Dye for a short time, rinse and dry thoroughly before untying. To add importance and emphasis to the outline of a shape composed of running stitches on single cloth with or without a central area of texture, two, three or four lines may be sewn. In every case, sew the row of stitches nearest to the pencil line first of all to preserve a good contour. The other lines need not follow the pencil line so accurately. The thickness of the thread from the various rows may be varied. The inner rows of the double or single cotton or finer thread. This method of outlining can be made most expressive and the greater advantage is that the pulling up and untying process are easier than for over sewing method. Sewn spirals method Draw the required shape on the cloth in pencil using single thread for a small spiral but double for a medium or large spiral. Make an extra large knot in the thread beginning at the center Sew along the pencil line until the outer edge of the spiral is reached. Draw up the thread from the needle end or from other ends. This is when the large knot in the center is an advantage. Tighten the thread until the cloth is packed into a solid mass of gathers. The spiral has now taken on the shape of a snail's shell. Fasten off both ends of the thread separately or wind up the thread from the outer edge of the spiral back to the inside which is at the top of the snail shell shape. Let the thread follow the line of sewing which has formed a spiral groove and tie it to the knotted thread at the top. After the first dyeing, the thread can be taken back again to the outside, still following the groove. 
and fastening off with several back stitches. The thread can be wound up and shown the spiral in the manner again after the next dime. It helps to give a better resist. The top of the spiral can be bleached or dyed a different color from the rest by inverting the tip of the snail shell shaped separately in the dye bleach. The top of the spiral can be withheld from the dye while the rest of the sample is dipped in a second color. Where there are several spirals on a sample, each one can be dyed separately and thus differently from the others. Dye can be brushed on the outside folds. Previously dyed sewing and binding threads may be used. The spiral method may be adapted to other shapes. For instance, the square, rectangle, triangle and to many irregular shaped figures. The outer rows of a spiral shape can be gradually extended into scallops, petal shapes or V shapes. Sewing on folded or double cloth. Anyone wishing to take up the craft of tie and dye seriously or desiring to create a wide range of designs would be well advised to spend some time mastering this particular technique. In most cases, the simplest form of stitching is sufficient to give good results. The most essential factor is the ability to pull up the sewing thread tightly and fasten off securely. The fact that sewing must be used for this technique need not deter those who have little or no skill with the needle. As ingenuity in arranging shapes and planning the color combinations is more important for arriving at successful designs. Very small or very large scale patterns are possible with this method which is often combined with suitable binding. People in most tie and dye areas of the world have made full use of this effective way of obtaining resist shapes. The choice of thread depends on the first kind of cloth, fine thread for fine or medium cloth, thicker cloth needs stronger thread. Second size of pattern. Fine cloth used double is suitable for some very tiny designs. The larger patterns need stronger thread, single or double. Third, length of each particular line of sewing. A very short line needs single thread. A long line, double thread. This technique of sewing on double cloth can be divided into two main sections, each one equally important and both permitting innumerable variations, lines and stripes. These can be made in any direction on the cloth and may be straightened, curved or zigzag. Method Rule a line for the center of each stripe and fold the cloth over double along it. 
make a row of running or tacking stitches on the double cloth just below the fold. Beginning the end with a large knot where there are several rows of sewing on one strip or where a group of lines or strips are together. Use a continuous sewing thread. Complete all the sewing on the sample. Draw up the threads very tightly and fasten off securely. Immerse the sample in the dye for a few seconds to begin with. If the resist is satisfactory, increase the dyeing time. Some of the threads can be left slack until after the first dyeing. These can then be drawn up before the second or third dyeing. After the final dyeing, rinse thoroughly, dry and untie. Several lines or stripes can be folded together and sewn as one. Instead of the lines of sewing being straightened, they can be sewn in curved or zigzag bands. Fold the cloth over double. Mark the direction on the cloth of sewing. Complete all sewing using medium stitches on the outside. But Larger ones for the filling in rows. Pull up the threads, fasten off and dye as planned. Curved and zigzag tucks. Method Mark the direction of the tucks in the pencil on the cloth. Crease along the lines and sew on the double cloth to form a narrow tuck. The fabric will need easing in round the curve and a small pleat will have to be made at the back of each point on the zigzags. More than one line of sewing may be made. Pull up the threads after completing the sewing and fasten off. Dye, rinse and untie. Variations First, place a binding round the loose gathered frill of the cloth that is formed above the sewing before or after the first dyeing. Stagger the drawing up process. Second, alternate strips sewn on single cloth with lines sewn on double cloth. Third, make a diamond net. Fourth, paint 
dye on the tips of the folds after the whole sample has been dyed. This should be in a darker or contrasting color from the main one. Fifth, when the whole sample has been dyed, form it into a coil, bind with strings and dye another color. Keep the tucks on the outside and make an open binding or bind in lines between the sewing tucks. Sixth, the edges of the folds can be bleached or waxed when a cold dye is being used. Any symmetrical shape. Before this method, one half of any symmetrical shape is outlined in running or tacking stitches or double cloth. When drawn up and dyed, this gives a resist outline of the whole shape. The center of the shape may be reserved with the addition of binding. It is most widely used for producing ovals, diamonds and squares which may be of any size placed along in groups or in rows anywhere on the sample. An individual oval or diamond method make a template of the oval or diamond cut in half. Draw a pencil line for the center of the shape and fold the cloth over the double along it. Place the straight edge of the template to the edge of the fold at the required spot. Draw round it in pencil. Keep the material in place with a few pins. These are more necessary when working on a large scale pattern. Sew from right to left along the pencil outline, beginning and ending at the folded edge. Two or three parallel rows of stitching can be made inside the shape to give it a bold outline. Cut and knot the thread. Pull it up very tightly and tie both ends together. The curved outline is now flattened and the former straight folded edge is frilled into a small fan-like shape projecting above the line of sewing. A little binding may be added along the line of sewing of each shape. If the sample is dyed at this stage, there will be a resist outline. When binding is added to the fan-like shape, there will be a textured resist of a whole oval or diamond. The small fan can be dyed separately by inverting it in the dye. This gives a colored diamond or oval on an undyed ground. Alter the sample has been dyed as number one, two or three. The fan shape can be covered with close binding and the whole sample dyed a second color. This gives an oval or diamond on a different colored background. The whole sample can be dyed. Then the fan shape dipped in bleach. Binding may be added for this. After dyeing the sample, the tip of the bound shape may have another colored dye brushed on. Wax may be applied to it before a second color is dyed. A row of oval or diamond. The oval and diamond shape just described may be repeated to form a row across or down a length of cloth.
the shapes may be very large or small similar or dissimilar the rows may be repeated to form an all over pattern